Okay. Uh, in the first session, we discussed about the, the three states of matter and their differences in grief. And also, we discussed about the types of the solids, namely the sternum of the solids. And also, I discussed about the differences between the uh, morphos and the stain solids. So, after knowing the differences between amorphous and crystalline solids, so let us see what are the examples of crystalline uh, uh, solids and amorphous solids. We name any salt. All salts are ionic in nature and they are this one. We name any salt. I will name any organic compound. There are examples of like majority acid salts, like acid now. So, if you name any solid compound, they are crystalline solids. Solids. So, also you name any solids, sodium chloride, sodium chloride, potassium chloride, cesium chloride, cadmium chloride, magnesium chloride, potassium chloride. You name any salt, all these salts and all your solid organic compounds are examples of crystalline solids. And when it comes to amorphous, so all primary substances and glass and you are examples of polymeric substances. Polymer, what are polymers you have to do again? You have studied about polymers in even in PUC. You have any plastic, it's an example of a polymer. Glass is also an example of amorphous solids called a supercool liquid or super solid. Right. So all the polymers are examples of amorphous solids. So it's very easy to remember. So glass. And any plastics that you have for, uh, you know, whether thermosetic plastic or thermoplastics, they are all examples of amorphous solids. So that's what we discussed in the last class. And today we shall discuss or shall see what are the different types of crystalline solids. We have learned that crystalline solids have a definite shape or definite geometry and also they have sharp melting point and they are anisotropic. And depending upon the type of particles that we make up at the spine solids, you can classify the spine solids into ionic solids. Covalent solids. Molecular solids. And metallic solids. So when we look at the classification of crystalline solids depending upon the nature of the particles that make or uh, constitute a crystalline solid, we classify them into ionic solids, covalent solids, molecular solids, and metallic solids. So, what are ionic solids? Here is one category of crystalline solids. As the name itself indicates, the particles that make up an ionic solid are ions. Just now I said any salt. That you mentioned is an example of ion salt. For example, simple salt that every one of us will try to answer is sodium chloride. Whenever we ask a student, they say the example of salt they say sodium chloride. So sodium chloride is an example of ion salt because during the formation of sodium chloride from sodium, sodium and chlorine, one electron from sodium is transferred to chlorine. So sodium acquires a positive charge and chlorine atom acquires a takes up an electron and acquires a negative charge. So, sodium chloride is made up of a positively charged sodium ion and negatively charged chloride ion. Therefore, sodium chloride is an example of uh, ion solid. So, also if you consider magnesium chloride, one ion of magnesium, magnesium is divided, it loses two electrons. One electron is defined to one chlorine atom, the other electron is called other chlorine atom. So you have when magnesium chloride ionizes, you get a magnesium ion and two chloride ions. Therefore, magnesium chloride is also an example of ionic solid. So you name any ionic compound, if it's a solid. So you name any salt, there are all examples of ionic solids. So how do you remember or how do you say the examples of salts? So you name any compound of first group of elements and seventh group elements because an ionic compound is formed between electropositive and electronegative elements. So electropositive elements in the periodic table are first group and second group elements, namely alkaline metals and alkaline metals, and electronegative elements are 16 group and 17 group elements. 
So any combination of electropositive and electronegative element will be present at ionic compound. So first group elements like sodium, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. And second group elements like beryllium, magnesium, gas, and calcium, vitamin, radium, is a radioactive element. Forget about that. So these elements, when reacted with the 17 group elements, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So any compound formed between first group and 17 group elements, any compound formed between second group and 17 group elements, they are all ionic in nature. So that's how we can give hundreds of examples of ionic compounds. So all ionic compounds are examples of ionic solids. Then what are covalent solids? In the case of ionic solids, the constant particles of the solid are ions and equilibrium forces are electrostatic forces of attraction are responsible for the fixed position of the ionic, uh, fixed position in the case of ionic solids. Then what are covalent solids? Here, atoms are the constituent particles. Atoms are the constituent particles. In the case of ionic solids, ions are the constituent particles. In the case of covalent solids, atoms are the constituent particles. So for example, so how the atoms are held together through covalent bonds. So if you take other atoms, that is in one part by it. Or if you take iodine, uh, iodine is a molecular solid. So silicon carbide is an example of a covalent compound. You name any hydrogen category of crystalline uh, solids or uh, covalent crystals. As name itself indicates, covalent crystals, they should be covalent. The force of attraction should be, be the constant particle should be a covalent bond. So as the name itself indicates, covalent crystals are made up of atoms. For example, it is silicon carbide. So the atoms of, that are present in silicon carbide are silicon and the carbon, which are bonded to a covalent bond. So silicon carbide is an example of a covalent crystal. Similarly, if you take an organic compound, for example, if you take naphthalene, which is a solid, so it's an example of a covalent compound. So naphthalene is a the structure of naphthalene is, so it is made up of carbon and hydrogen and the carbon and hydrogen atoms are linked through covalent bonds. So it's an example of a, a covalent compound. So you name any organic compound, there are examples of a covalent crystals, a covalent solids. And third category of uh, crystalline solids are molecular crystals or molecular solids. As the name itself indicates, the constant particle, particles of molecular solids are molecules. For example, a simple example is iodine. Iodine is a solid, that's the only halogen which is present in the solid state. Bromine is a liquid state, others are in the state. So, iodine is an example of a molecular solid. Even dry ice, which is nothing but solid carbon dioxide, is an example of a molecular solid. And ice, the solid form of water is also an example of a molecular salt. And what are the forces of attraction that exist between the molecules in the molecular solids? They are nothing but Van der Waals forces. It could be your hydrogen bond, as you have seen in the case of water. And the last category of crystalline solids are metallic crystals. As the name itself indicates, uh, the constant particles of these metallic crystals are metal atoms. And you have studied metallic bond in your PUC. So the forces of attraction between metal atoms and metallic crystal is a metallic bond. You name any metal, it uh, is an example of a metallic solid. For example, copper, silver, gold. Iron, okay, nickel, yeah, any kind of any metal is an example of a metallic crystal. So, depending upon the type of particles that constitute the solid or crystal solid, we classify crystal solids into four categories nucleonic, covalent, molecular, and metallic solids. Right, so once we have an idea of uh, different types of crystalline solids and also crystalline solids have definite geometry 
The question is, what is a definite geometry? Or uh, what type of geometry do these crystalline solids possess? So, we have uh, all the crystalline solids will possess any one of seven crystal systems. Basically, there are seven types of crystal systems. And these are seven types are cubic system, tetragonal system, orthorhombic system, hexagonal, monoclinic. And round. So these are the seven types of geometry in which the crystal solids will solidify or will exist. So we will stop here and I will continue the types of crystal systems and their properties in the next session.